Well, good evening. My name is Evan Gregory, and this is Bible Answers. Tonight's topic is going to be on honesty, and I hope this will be useful for all of you. And I am a member of North Columbus Church of Christ. We are located in Columbus, Mississippi. Website scrolling below me at northcolumbuschristians.com. There you find out more about us. And I would love for you to come visit us in, in, at our time of service, which are Sunday at 9 a.m., 10 a.m., and 11 a.m., and then on Wednesdays at 6.30 p.m. And we'd most definitely love to have you uh, to visit. And this is a live show, so any comments, questions, as, you know, as long as they're related to the Bible, uh, even if they're not related to this particular question, as long as it's related uh, to uh, you know, the Bible in general, I would love to talk about those things. And even if it requires me to come back at a later time and talk about them on this show, would love to uh, uh, to uh, have those comments. But going right into the uh, into the lesson, if I get everything set up, uh, dealing with honesty, I'm assuming that everybody understands what honesty is. It's, uh, you know, we're, and we can contrast between being honest and dishonest, say, for example, one speaking the truth versus one lying. And, uh, you know, that would be not uh, telling the truth or not even doing the truth. And I want to look at Leviticus 19, and we're not going to turn there, but... So this is uh, the law that was given to uh, the Jews. And I want to make note there that in that chapter, I'm the Lord your God is written 15 times just in that chapter. At least that's how many I counted. And why does he say those things? Well, it's again a reference to his authority, to his power. And uh, the Jews, you know, by implication, the Jews have, have you know, every... Uh, you know, every obligation to be obedient to him and, and, and be willing to do the things in which he lays forth. And in that chapter, we see a lot of instances where honesty or being honest in tongue, you know, in verses 11, 12, and 16, but also not with just what you say, but also in the things in which you do. So we have a payment to the laborers, being honest with that, being honest in your measurements, and then having these honest judgments as well. And just as an aside note, there's much that's going, that can be said in the Old Testament about not only just being dishonest, we're not going to really look at these Old Testament scriptures dealing with uh, saying things that are dishonest or lying, but in reference to your dishonest measures, there's a lot that could be said about that and how God abhors people cheating people by the use of uh, sc scales, for example, that were not reading correctly. And by doing that, people could cheat people out of money and they could cheat people out of their livelihood. So when we look at the uh, honesty and even the Old Testament, that this honesty goes beyond simply what we have to say. It also encompasses everything that we do as well. Now going to Ephesians 4, verse 25, so moving to the New Testament, uh, Paul writes, is therefore putting away lying, uh, let each one of you speak truth with, with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. And so this is a very plain, clear statement from Paul. So what are we supposed to be saying? Well, we're supposed to be uh, only speaking the truth. We're to put away lying. That's the old man. Those are, that's the way of the world. So we're going to put away this old man and putting away this lying, this being deceitful, and speaking truth. And, and of course, when we think about that, we may say, well, this is just very, that's less well, simple. Well, what happens when it may be that the truth may be offensive uh, to my neighbor? Uh, do I soften the truth? Do I kind of change, kind of twist the truth a little bit so I don't offend them? And recognize that even in regards to that, we have to be very uh, truthful and, and honest in the way we present things, even if uh, they may be offensive uh, to others, and I'm not talking about well, you know, silly things and like, well, I just don't like, uh, you know, maybe I don't like the way you painted the, you know, the living room and the house water. We're not talking about that. We're talking about things such as scripture 
and the truth of the gospel. Even if that offends, we should be willing to speak uh, those things. In Ephesians 4, verse 29, it goes even further. So we were talking about speaking truth. So that would be we're putting away lying. So we're putting on honesty. And here it goes even further. It says, let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for and necessary edification, uh, that it may impart grace to the hearers. So no corrupt corrupt words. So not is it not is it only just speaking truth, but we also have some qualifications for what we should be saying. And our words should, of course, not be corrupt, but also edify. And this idea of edifying is building up. So it's not tearing somebody down. You're not speaking uh, things that just uh, break someone down. It causes them to be discouraged. And also it imparts grace to the hearer. So the things in which it is the most useful is most good for those uh, that are around us. Even though the things in which we say could be true, uh, is it edifying? Does it build that person up? It doesn't impart grace. You know, does it, you know, show this favor uh, to this individual? Or I'm just saying these things just to bring that individual down. So we should not be doing that. So not just simply lying, but also these corrupt words. Now also recognize that dishonesty is intertwined with worldly lust, and these are things in which we ought to give up. Uh, Titus 2 verses 11 through 13. It says, For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, uh, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in the present age, looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so uh, this is a very well-known set of scriptures, and it's very broad that we ought to deny ungodliness and worldly lust, and that salvation teaches us to deny those things. But recognize how we should live soberly, righteously, and godly. And so we recognize that dishonesty has no part in this living righteously, godly, soberly it has nothing to do with living, uh, uh, living uh, godly, living according to uh, the will of God. That is directly associated uh, with uh, that ungodliness and uh, those worldly lusts. So think about it, a lot of times when uh, people do lie. What, 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 what's the reason for them lying? It's usually they think that they're going to get ahead some way. If they're lying about something, say, for example, they lie on their, on their resume for a job application. What's it for? What to get the job, probably get more money. And it's some way, usually, in which it is to, you know, make our lives easier, supposedly make or hopefully make our lives easier, at least we think that way, or, it's, you know, to make us, you know, richer or to get, you know, get more uh, power, whatever it may be. That's usually the reasoning as to why uh, we are lying. It's somewhere in that a uh, matter of thought. But recognize we ought to give up those things. We ought to deny those, deny those things. And salvation teaches us uh, to deny those things. Pride may also be a reason for us being dishonest. And you think about Ananias and Sapphira in, in Acts chapter 5. And if you all are not familiar with that, I would recommend you go reading that. But basically, these two individuals, are, they were husband and wife. They were Christians. They go and sell some land, and they only bring and only uh, bring part of the money which they claim, uh, they claim so well. Basically, they sold a piece of land. They had X amount of dollars, but they kept some of it back. And then when they went to go give that money, they said they were giving the entire sales price for land when in actuality there was they, they wasn't. And what happens is, is Peter confronts him and they end up being they end up dying. And ultimately God uh, strikes them down for what they did is that they lied against the Holy Spirit. Now, was it and and it wasn't that they had to give that whole uh, that whole amount of money to uh to uh the church or to peter but they lied and said 
we were giving it all. They could have they could have kept half of the money for themselves and then gave the other half to the church. But this is not what they wanted to do. Uh, they wanted to lie about it. They wanted to be dishonest. And why did they do that? And we really don't know. But uh, I think it's pretty obvious that the reason they're doing that is so people could look at them and say they were willing to do these great things to help those that were in need. You know, to you know to make a name for themselves. And really, ultimately, it was their pride, uh, which was uh, their downfall. And, you know, just going back to what we were previously talking about, you know, uh, this pride of, you know, maintaining a stature. So maintaining a, a good job or maintaining certain relationships or maintaining, uh, you know, this, you know, this maybe this reputation amongst men. Uh, can cause us to act in a dishonest manner. And we see that example with Ananias and Sapphira. Notice in Matthew 23, verses 5 through 7, Jesus is talking about uh, these individuals that do these great things, but they're just doing these things to be seen by men. It says, all their works they do to be seen by men. They make their phylacteries broad and enlarge the borders of their garments. They love the best places at feast. The, blessed, the best seats in the synagogues, greetings in the marketplaces, and to be called by men, Rabbi, Rabbi. So he's talking about uh, the Jewish leaders, the Pharisees, and we see here uh, that they were doing these things specifically to be seen by men, and they love all the, the benefits of being in their position rather than actually doing uh, the work of God. So... Again, that's a great lesson for us. Moving along, uh, when we think about uh, practically being dishonest or being deceitful, that it destroys trust amongst individuals. And when we look at Second Kings chapter nineteen, it's a situation where the king of Syria has has uh, gone uh, has gone up against uh, Jerusalem. Hezekiah here is a king, and we see where the the Rabshaka, or is it basically a, 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 a kind of an assistant to the king, uh, goes and says, Thus you shall speak to Hezekiah, king of Judah, saying, uh, Do not let uh, your God in whom you trust deceive you, saying, Jerusalem shall not be given into the hand of the king of, of Assyria. And so he's saying that to the Jews, and he's telling the Jews, Hey, look, you know, don't listen to Hezekiah. Uh, God's not going to deliver you. Uh, Hezekiah is lying to you. And ultimately, if you kept on reading that chapter, you see what well, Hezekiah was 100% telling the truth. And uh, God did deliver the Jews from uh, the Assyrians. But recognize what he was trying to do here. Is he was trying to destroy the trust that the Jews had with uh, King Hezekiah and doing this in, the, in a deceitful manner. And I think we can recognize uh, this in uh, various facets in our life. If somebody lies to me. I, I, it's hard for me to ever trust that individual again. And, uh, you know, I'm always going to be, even if, I, you know, even if, you know, that person repents, I forgive him, and he does the right things, there's still, you know, something there that, that, that I have to be careful and recognize that although he he's he's straightened out that this is what he has done before, and I have to be careful about that. And and, and the reality is is it stays in my mind, uh, regardless of you know regardless of what he does or what I do. And there's that part of that relationship that just kind of gets really destroyed uh, by lying or being uh, deceitful. James 5, verse 12 says, But above all, my brethren, do not swear, either by heaven or by earth or with any other oath, but let your yes be yes and your no, no, unless you fall into judgment. And here, he's, uh, James is talking about that basically you, you know, you be such an honest individual that, you know, don't be given these oaths, but say yes. And when you say yes, it's, you know, it's really just as good as you gave a note. Because when you said it, uh, you have, you know, that you know that it's going to be gone. You have committed to this. There's nothing really going to stop you uh, from doing this. And the same thing with saying no. 
And so uh, we see there that uh, even in, you know, if I commit to doing something and I say, yes, I'm, I'm going to be here, well, I need to be here. And of course, we recognize there may be some emergency, but other than that, I'm committed to be there. And, 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 and that, again, builds a reputation for myself. Am I willing to, uh, you know, even if it may put me in some type of bind, am I willing to keep uh, those promises? Or am I just going to say, well, I'm not going to worry about it. And that reputation, that trust that any other individual may have uh, with me, uh, it gets destroyed because of me lying to that individual. And recognize finally in Revelations 21 and verse 8, We've been talking about honesty. Well, what, you know, when I'm dishonest, I'm a liar. Well, what's going to happen to those that are liars? Well, they're going to be condemned. Uh, they're going to be thrown in the lake of fire. But the cowardly, unbelievable, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the, part in the lake which burns with fire and brims and death. So you may think, well, lying is not that big of a deal. It's just a little white lie. Well, it's going to cause you to be in the same spot as the murderer, as the idolater, as the sexually immoral. We can look at that and say, well, that's really bad. Well, lying is just as bad. It's going, it's going, to, it's going to end up causing you to be condemned just like these other individuals. And so even if that's the only thing we look at, recognize the severity of what happens if we refuse uh, to act honestly. All right, and that is the end of my lesson. Again, I hope it's been useful for those that will watch. Again, if you have any comments, questions, feel free to leave those. And I um, uh, hope that you will tune in next week around this. Well, I may or may not be here. I'm planning on doing it, but uh, we're getting close to holidays, so I may not be here, but I'm planning on We'll try to do something uh, Sunday. I'm not going to give you my complete word on that we just talked about that but i'm gonna plan on doing it, do it the best i can but um, again we try to do these every sunday it's around seven and so i uh, hope that you will tune in i do upload these on youtube as well so uh, find our page youtube page north columbus church of christ and um, watch them if you miss them and or show them to your friends or family but until again until then i hope uh, that this has been useful for y'all and uh, hope uh, that you will keep tuning in uh, to our later shows. Thanks.